Hi there, I am Alejandro Lopez, Application Engineer at Endopology. And today I'll be showing you how you can take your Lattice design process one step further. And for a set of structural requirements, get the best design option with Endopology. So many of our customers, many folks out there are wondering, hey, I have this heavy uh, part and I want to lightweight it with some lattices, but there's so many options and, and they don't know what to do. Uh, should I choose a body center cubic? Should I choose a face center cubic? And also, um, how do I ensure that the design I choose and the size, is it 10 by 10 by 10, or is it 20 by 20 by 20, or five by five by five? Which size is the best to lightweight this part? and to meet my structural requirements. So, you know that with NTOP, we can do things like latticing based on simulation data. So you see, in this case, we had run a static analysis on this rake pedal and automatically thickened the lattice based on those stress results from that uh, load case. That is very interesting, but that doesn't quite answer the question, to be honest. I mean, this is a very useful workflow uh, in terms of, I want to only add material where I truly need it. But if we want to really explore all options very fast and make the best choice based on some structural requirements, it's a bit more complex, but you'll see that with anthropology, this is quite achievable and you don't need to spend crazy amounts of time doing it. Let's have a look at the problem. So first I'm going to show you um, the problem that we solved here, uh, what methods we use, what results we use, and then we'll jump into the software to show you a bit more in detail how, how we did this. But basically, this could be any part, in this case, it's a connecting rod that we are loading laterally with a hundred kilogram load or 980 newtons. We have some restraints at the uh, bolted regions. And then we have a region where we want to lightweight this part. We want to add some lattice infill. So also we know that the material that we want to use here is titanium and this gives a yield strength of 720 megapascals but typically in structural design we use uh, safety factors so we'll use a safety factor of 120 percent and these are the requirements that we have for this part so this part of an assembly of course and we cannot let this uh, displace as much as uh, we want so we need uh, the displacement to be below 0 0.8 millimeters and also uh, in terms of safety we need the von Mises stress of this part to be below 546 megapascals so those are the structural requirements for this part and this load case and this material and then the design goal what what we have been told to do is we need to lightweight this part with some lattice design that is as lightweight as possible, but that meets the structural requirements. So here, there's different variables that we need to consider. The lattice type, the lattice size, and the lattice thickness. So what lattice type should I choose? What unit cell size should I select? And what thickness should I apply? So it starts getting a bit complicated, as you can see, because there's so much choice, so many possibilities. This is not a classic manner of designing, really. Um, we are opening the possibilities to modeling the inside of objects in much more complex ways. So we need smart ways of, of dealing with this complexity in order to make the best design decisions. And that's why we'll do the following approach I'm about to uh, show you now. On a first step, we will be building a 3D mesh 
for the frame that we will attach through tie constraints to the lattice that will be made of uh, 1D elements, beam elements. This will allow a very fast iteration thanks to a reduced size model. This will allow you to have representative displacement results. We will see this later, we will compare, but basically reduced uh, size models, they tend to not be so good for stress results, but they tend to be quite representative of displacement results. And basically through this model, we will iterate very fast and that will give us a great qualitative comparison of lattices. So as I said, some limitations is the stress results are not accurate because it doesn't represent fillets. It doesn't, it has tight constraints which are, are very rigid. So it has some extra rigidity in the model. And then the 1D beam effect. We don't, we're not modeling those objects in 3D. So that's another obvious limitation. On a second step though, with the step one, we will have filter out the best design from the bad ones. We will have chosen a good lattice type and a good lattice size. And then we'll go to the 3D model, which is much more representative of stress values. And that will allow you to evaluate uh, different design possibilities in terms of filleting and to truly to achieve the truly optimal thickness. We are not doing the whole iteration with this model because of course these are much heavier computations and these iterations don't happen uh, as fast as with the other model. But this is why uh, this approach is very useful. And to be honest, in this part, it's not such a big part. So I could have probably just gotten away with the step, with the second method, with a full 3D model. But if this part was much bigger, you would definitely need this approach to make this um, design process uh, not so time consuming. All right, so first I'm going to show you what results I obtained and later I'll show you in detail uh, how we achieved this. So I tried different lattice types with my first step with the, the 3D frame and the 1D lattice. And for each one of those lattice types, I obtained the lattice size. So I, I, I started at a lattice size of 10, 10, 10, and then I went smaller and smaller in order to uh, meet the displacement structural requirement, which was 0 0.8 millimeters. So of obviously the smaller your lattice, the more material and the stiffer you will be, but the less weight you will save. So by doing this design of experiment, I was able to realize that the octet gave me the best stiffness with respect to weight. So with the octet, I have the best weight savings and this design meets the displacement structural requirement. So then I will take this design and I will simulated in the 3D model with these uh, properties, with the octet lattice type, with the lattice size of 10, 10, 10. And then I obtained my stress value of 630 megapascals. So when I see that, I realize, okay, I am meeting my displacement requirement, but I'm a bit off in terms of stress requirement. So I need to tweak the model. You could do this iteratively as well. In, in my case, I prefer to stay in the 3D model and do it myself because I want to have full control over what's going on. I want to see where the high stresses are, how I can modify the model to redistribute that stress. But of course, you could also do this in an iterative fashion. Basically, I changed my thickness instead of one millimeter to three millimeters in the high stress region. So it's a ramped thickness through field-driven design. And I achieved a stress value of 530 megapascals. So with this final design, I was able to be compliant with displacement requirement. So you see that in the end, by adding a bit more thickness, I got a bit more stiff. So I'm at 0 0.68 millimeters, which is below 0 0.8 millimeters. 
And then I was also compliant with stress requirement, which is I obtained 532 megapascals, which is below 546 megapascals. And the amount of weight that I saved in the end was 29%. Of course, this could have been done in a more refined manner, but I'm just showing you the idea of how you can select the best uh, lattice design and to get the best uh, uh, weight savings while keeping your structural requirements. All right, so this is the exercise that I've done. And now I'd like to show you a bit more in detail uh, how this was done. So the first step, if you remember, here we can see it, the solid mesh, the lattice mesh, and then those tight constraints connecting the both of them. And then we have the static analysis set up. And you see at the end of my workflow, I have the lattice type and the lattice scale as inputs. So these are the inputs that I'm iterating with in order to achieve the best design. So I did that through, I connected NTOP with uh, Python and with those two inputs, I can iterate on the displacement and sorry, on the lattice size and on the lattice type. So I think this will come a bit more clear here on the right hand side. So you see on each iteration, I do a lattice size and a lattice type, and I check what the max displacement is. So in this case, well, this is an error. It should be meters here because um, yeah, it's in meters units. So here I obtain six millimeters, but my requirement is to be below 0 0.008 millimeters. So that iteration, that the next iteration, we went down in size for the same lattice type. And then I passed from six millimeters to three millimeters. So that's much better already. And then it keeps doing it until it reaches the best, the, the design that meets the displacement requirement. So for the simple cubic lattice type, by the time I reached three, three, three millimeters of lattice size, then I reached the below 0 0.8 millimeter requirement. Okay, and then we did this for a bunch of other lattices. So here are all the lattice types that I uh, tried. Here is the dictionary. So I tried simple cubic, body center cubic, face center cubic. Um, I also tried diamond. I tried fluoride, octet, and truncated cube. So you see, I tried quite a bunch of, of lattice types and I have them all, uh, I set up this workflow so that, um, sorry, this one, so that it would export some text that gives me information in terms of weight savings for each lattice type and each lattice size. This is the way, this is the information that I used to build this table that I showed you. And then I was able to evaluate the best uh, lattice type. So, the most amazing part of this is I was in for so many um, for so many parameters that I can choose from. In only nine minutes, you see the first iteration happened at two twenty one p.m. and then the last iteration happened at two thirty p.m. In nine minutes, I was able to choose the best lattice and the best lattice size for this structural displacement uh, requirement. And then all I had to do was to go to my 3D model. And then initially, as I showed you, I had a, a stress value of 613 megapascals, but then I just changed the thickness from one to three millimeters. And then I saw that now I am right uh, below the threshold. So I achieved my optimized design, the best lattice type, with the correct lattice size and with the correct lattice thickness. So you see, it's not that difficult. You can download these files as a reference, use them in your parts. If you have much bigger parts and you want to use lattices on them and you want to really get the best lattice type, the best lattice size, all of these questions are not so complicated with this method, you will be able to achieve that optimal design. So I hope that was useful for you. 
thank you very much for your attention. And don't hesitate to um, check our uh, end of life videos on our website. There's a lot of nice applications there from, from myself and, and my colleagues at Entop. So I hope that was useful. Thank you very much. And you have a nice day.